Hi, I'm Giselle Casilag and I am a curator and writer. In today's episode of Cultural Cash Online, I will be talking about a work by Mauro Malang Santos in the Cultural Center of the Philippines Visual Arts Collection titled Landscape. But the first Malang artwork we would be introduced to is that of his iconic depictions of women. They are vendors from his youth clad in terno, selling fruits, flowers, or fish in woven baskets. The figures are outlined in black, which he fills in with vibrant colors. It is the Manila of the 1930s, from when, as a child, he would visit the market with his mother. It is in the stylized rendition of the women with their disproportionate bodies and oversized butterfly sleeves that he sees artistic roots. Having worked for the Manila Chronicle for 20 years as a cartoonist and a graphic artist, his experience in the newsroom heavily influenced his distinctive style. So distinctive and popular that writer Butch Delisay once remarked, you know a malang when you see one. The black outlines the exaggerated elements, the use of color and texture to give prominence to features in the unique way that Malang is known for. I first met Mr. Malang in 1997 when I was invited to interview him. I was under the impression that it would be part of an event, press conference, to be attended by many members of the media. But it was a shock when I arrived at the venue and found out that it was a one-on-one -on -one interview. I was early but he was already there. I was so nervous and still trying to process the fact that I will be interviewing a man whose work I have deeply admired since I was first introduced to his art in my elementary years. But he looked uncomfortable too. He also did not like being interviewed. He did not like talking about his art. He preferred to talk about concepts, ideas, and the latest news in the art scene. He loved knowing what art other artists were up to. And not just the visual artists, but also those from other art forms. He had a gift for relating the local issues of visual artists such as himself with the general concerns of the entire artistic community. And that is why his statements would often resonate across the entire spectrum of art. He was unbelievably generous with his time and talent. From time to time, he would send me and my friends postcards, notes, or an invitation to his exhibitions. And to others, leaflets that would include a quoted passage from the Bible in his handwriting. He was a man of faith, and he liked sharing these reflections that gave him inspiration. One memory I have of this particular landscape piece was during the 50th anniversary show in 2018 of the Saturday Group, which Mr. Malang co-founded and headed for years when he was older later becoming its revered elder and advisor. It was just almost a year after his passing when I went with a group of friends who were close to him. When we passed by this piece on our way up to the gallery, we all spontaneously waved to it and said, Hi, sir! We would always wave to his paintings and say hello. Landscape serves almost like a ray of sunshine in such a dark corner of the main theater lobby. It is the polar opposite of the brutalist architecture of the cultural center. Against the cold concrete, marble trim, and mood lighting, Mr. Malang's painting brings so much life, warmth, and color into the space. If you look at the elements, it appears like trees, nature, with his signature barong-barongs or shanties behind it. And if one is a critic reading too much into it, one might say that it is a social commentary on urbanization and how far we have distanced ourselves from our natural environment. Dominating the canvas is a collection of geometric-like protrusions. It is graphic, almost harsh if not for the bright shades of green and blue that tame the hard edges. The curving shapes lead to a pointed edge, giving a clue. We are looking at leaves. The central figure is an abstracted tree. Behind it are his barong-barongs, and a closer inspection would reveal a green coconut tree on one side and what appears to be an electric line on the right. The elements are revealed gently as the abstract forms begin to make sense with each new discovery. 
At times, He allows us to use our imagination and fill in the blanks with our own personal experience. At some point, we begin to hear dogs barking and children playing. We remake His art into our own reality, and He would be okay with that. Landscape was painted in 1981, a time when Mr. Malang had been painting professionally for 20 years. It differs from his works from a decade before when he relied much more heavily on figurative details and literal expressions. Instead, he evolved into creating visual feasts that celebrate the art of painting. At this point, he had grown more confident with the foundation that he laid out on the canvas and had allowed that to shine through with his masterful use of colors blended beautifully with each stroke. Leading up to this period, he would exhibit regularly with Filipino masters, who would eventually be named national artists, Vicente Manansala, Cesar Legaspi, and Ankyo Kok. As an artist, there is a fearlessness in the way Mr. Malang stood up for his passion. He was a hard-working man. Success never made him complacent. Every person who has had a conversation with him would recall being told, art is like a mistress. Pag hindi mo inalagaan, iiwan ka niyan. And he practiced what he preached. He painted every day. He painted even when he was sick or just didn't feel like it. He understood that while his art was a talent, it was also a skill to be honed every single day. He was a very disciplined man. He was also very open-minded. He read up about art and artists, doing things that are so different from his work. He listened to varied perspectives and kept himself up to date on new materials. He met regularly with different groups of friends from different backgrounds. All of these found their way into improving his art. He would repeatedly tell young artists, his sons included, to discover their own style, not just follow what others have done before them. He didn't want to be copied. He wanted true originality that came from looking inward while being open to the world. But one of the many things I've always admired about Mr. Malang was the way he championed not just his own art, but the artistic community as a whole. In 1955, he established Bug House, which gave cartoonists such as future national artist Larry Alcala a safe space to exhibit their work. He was a staunch defender of artists' rights. He published several books to introduce Filipino artists to the younger generations. He established Art Manila, a quarterly publication that reported on the current issues in Philippine art. And for up-and-coming artists, he regularly joined art exhibitions, knowing it would draw the attention of collectors to the event and provide much-needed exposure for everyone. This unbridled generosity is his true legacy. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Cultural Cash Online.